so hello everyone welcome you all to this new video so we have covered a lot of concepts uh, in these videos uh, the four videos so this is the fifth video from the first module that is a uh, introduction to embedded systems so i guess this would be the last video we are left with only few concepts of uh, uh, remaining with the external communication interfaces that is uh, bluetooth wi-fi and zigbee okay so these three things we are going to cover in this video and we are going to finish this video okay so we have covered uh, mostly all the concepts from which is uh, there for, from the syllabus point of view for the exam that is the final exam so hope you understood these concepts also this notes is available this pdf is available in the description as well go and access it and study these things okay what and all are the there right this is the limited part the, this is not taken from the textbook so this is from the department of ece ATMEC Mysore, okay. So this notes uh, is uh, with respect to the syllabus point of view only, very short notes. So which and all are the concepts there in these notes? Everything is, all the things are very, very important, multiple times repeated, okay. So I'm going to make one more video uh, from uh, next of this video that is related to the important questions from this module. Uh, and also we are going to refer the model question paper uh, where the what and all the questions are there and how we have covered these kind of those questions, okay. So that we are going to do it in the upcoming video. So stay tuned for that as well. So yeah, mostly all the concepts we have covered from module one. So we have left with only these three concepts. So let us cover them now. Okay. Next is external communication interface Bluetooth. Okay. So Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and I don't know about Zigbee, but Bluetooth and Wi-Fi are the most common source of internet that is used for communication purposes worldwide everybody are using bluetooth and wi-fi right now i'm recording this using uh, uh, microsoft clipchamp software and i'm using wi-fi okay so that's why this wi-fi and bluetooth technology are commonly used worldwide and uh, i hope everybody might be knowing this so this is a sure short question if they give for exam so this thing this bluetooth and wi-fi about bluetooth and wi-fi you could be writing it in your own words how much you know okay so uh, according to this some there are some theory given here so that i'm going to re uh, re read it out to you okay first is it is low cost low power short range wireless technology for data and voice communication so this operates at 2.4 gigahertz of radio frequency spectrum and uses the frequency hopping spread spectrum that is fhss technique for communication Bluetooth supports a theoretical maximum data rate of up to 1 megabit per second and a range of approximately 30 feet for data communication. Bluetooth communication has two essential parts. First is a physical link part and the protocol part. The physical link is responsible for physical transmission of data between the devices supporting Bluetooth communication and the protocol part is responsible for defining the rules of communication. Okay. So these are the two essential parts of uh, Bluetooth communication. First is physical link part and the protocol part. The physical link works on the wireless principle making use of RF waves that is the radio frequency waves for communication. The Bluetooth enabled devices essentially contain a Bluetooth wireless radio for the transmission and reception of data. The rules governing the Bluetooth communication is implemented in the Bluetooth protocol stack. Okay. The, this is the stack where the uh, the restrictions of Bluetooth is uh, implemented. Uh, the restrictions of Bluetooth are stored, and uh, with respect to that, they, it gives the warning with respect to the usage. Okay, for example, if we have the certain time limit of Bluetooth to be used, it gives a warning that uh, uh, the time limit is uh, expiring. So that's why this is the uh, implemented using the Bluetooth protocol stack. The Bluetooth communication IC holds the stack. Each Bluetooth device will have a 48-bit unique identification number. So this is there for any of the devices which you use Bluetooth. Okay. If you go to the settings of the Bluetooth, this number would be there. Okay. It is a 48-bit unique identification number. Bluetooth communication follows the packet-based data transfer. Uh, Bluetooth supports point-to-point -point and point-to-multipoint wireless communication. Point-to-point -point means device-to-device -device and Point to multipoint means device to multiple devices. Okay. So if you uh, see the Bluetooth connections, if you connect from one device, that could be accessed by any other multiple devices, right? Yeah. The point to point communication follows the master slave relationship. 
uh, a Bluetooth device can function as either master or slave. Okay, a network formed with one Bluetooth device as master and more than one device as slave is known as PicoNet. Okay, so if they ask in general, uh, uh, what do you mean by PicoNet? A net uh, that is a network formed with one Bluetooth device as master and more than one device as slave. Okay, that device, those kind of uh, network devices under Bluetooth are called as PicoNet. Okay. So this was about completely about Bluetooth theory part. Okay, so I, uh, this these and all are the uh, 2.4 gigahertz uh, radio, radio frequency spectrum, one megabit per second range of proximity, physical link part, protocol part, the two essential parts, and, and all the underlying stuff are there, right? Those are new to you guys, but uh, other things about Bluetooth, if they ask in the exam to extend the answer, you could write it in your own words how much you know because you're. We all are using Bluetooth in our daily lives. Okay, so it is easy to write the answers. So whatever I've uh, highlighted here, main points, uh, you please go through it and uh, include these points when you're writing the exam when it comes, when the question arrives. Okay, next is next one more important external communication interface is Wi-Fi. The full form of Wi-Fi is wireless fidelity. Okay, I hope uh, everybody, most of them, I hope they might be knowing this. Wireless fidelity is the full form of Wi-Fi. It is a popular wireless communication technique for networked communication of devices. Okay, if you want to connect the net or the internet, what we do, we on our Wi-Fi hotspot. Okay, uh, due to that, what happens? The the device with the one device's network connection would be transferred to other device. Okay, it is a popular wireless communication technique. Wi-Fi follows the IEEE 802.11 standard, okay, as the server. So this is the server here which they have used, that is the IEEE 802.11. Wi-Fi is intended for network communication and it supports internet protocol based communication. Wi-Fi based communications required an intermediate agent called Wi-Fi router or wireless access point. So this is required, Wi-Fi router so this is the uh, this Wi-Fi router is simply a place where the uh, multiple Wi-Fi connections are stored. For example, in a if you take a particular uh, in a college, if you take a particular lab, okay, where the there are we have around thirty to forty systems in a particular lab, and for all those, in order to provide the Wi-Fi connection, we should be having a controlling part, and that part is called as Wi-Fi router, where the signals are transferred to all the systems, okay. The Wi-Fi router is responsible for restricting the access to a network by assigning the IP address to devices on the network, routing data packets to the intended devices on the network. So this is the main purpose of this Wi-Fi router that is it restricts the access to a particular network. Okay, If you want to restrict a particular system that is uh, uh, if you want to cancel the network of a particular system that could be done by these Wi-Fi routers. Wi-Fi enabled devices contain a wireless adapter for transmitting and receiving the data in the form of radio signals through antenna. Wi-Fi operates at the range of 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz of radio spectrum and they coexist with other ISM MAN devices like Bluetooth. A Wi-Fi network is identified with the service set identifier that is SSID. A Wi-Fi device can connect to a network by selecting the SSID of the network and by providing the credentials if the network is security enabled. Wi-Fi networks implements different security mechanisms for authentication and data transfer. Wireless equivalency protocol that is WEP, uh, wireless protected access WPA etc are some of the security mechanisms which are used by Wi-Fi networks in the data communication. Okay, so this was everything about external communication interface, Wi-Fi. Okay, so see here, I've told you right, one simple scenario of a Wi-Fi router, you see here. From this Wi-Fi router, the Wi-Fi connection is given, taking place, uh, is uh, distributed to all the devices. So these are the three devices, device one, two, three. Okay, so I hope you understood this part. So Wi-Fi. So Bluetooth and Wi-Fi are done. So this is the last part. Uh, this is not commonly used, but uh, in the syllabus it is included. So that's why I thought to cover this part that is uh, Zigbee, okay? Zigbee is low power, low cost wireless network. Again, it is a wireless network communication protocol 
based on IEEE 802.15.4, 2006 standard. Zigbee is targeted for a low power, low data rate and secure applications for wireless personal area networking that is WPAN. The Zigbee specification support a robust mesh network containing multiple nodes. This networking strategy makes the network reliable by permitting messages to travel through a number of different parts to get the to get from one node to another. The Zigbee operates worldwide at the unlicensed band of uh, radio spectrum mainly at 2.400 to 2.484 gigahertz, 902 to 928 megahertz and 868 to 868.6 megahertz. Okay. So Zigbee supports an operating distance of uh, up to 100 meters and a data rate of 20 to 250 kilobytes per second. The Zigbee is primarily targeting the application areas like home and industrial automation, energy management, home control security, medical patient tracking, logistics and asset tracking and sensor networks and active RFID. Okay. So automatic uh, meter reading that is AMR, smoke and detectors, wireless telemetry, HVAC control, heating control, lighting controls, environmental controls etc. are the examples for applications which can make use of this Zigbee technology. Okay. So this uh, Zigbee technology also they have mentioned here that is uh, in the Zigbee terminology each Zigbee device falls under one of the following Zigbee device category. Okay. So this Zigbee uh, as, uh, as, far as, as, as far as as far as I have read, so this Zigbee is basically a single device which is used to control multiple devices. Okay. So again, it, it uh, has the relationship with the uh, common relationship with that of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth as well. Okay. It, so with respect to that, we have Zigbee coordinator, Zigbee router and Zigbee end device. Okay. So this is the simple block to represent the Zigbee here. So make a note of it. Okay. So that's all guys. I didn't, I didn't know much about this Zigbee. So that's why I went on reading this, but uh, this uh, is very important. So that's why I thought to cover this. So yeah, that's all guys. The, so these are some of the recommended questions from, uh, it is available in this uh, end of the PDF. Okay. You can uh, go through it. Uh, based on the notes provided in the above, we, uh, they have given some of the recommended questions which would be very useful for you guys. Okay. So see here, the first question is what is embedded system? I mentioned its application. Explain the purposes, everything we have covered. Explain how embedded systems are classified. It is done. Applications are done. Elements of embedded system we have done neatly. We have done a separate video on that as well. All mention all the cores around which the embedded systems are built. All the core technologies I have already told you. Okay microprocessor, controllers, I2C, SPI, everything is done. Differentiation between general purpose computing and embedded is done. Microprocessor, microcontroller is done. Risk and CISC is done. Harvard one one is done. Big Indian Little Indian is done. SRAM, DRAM, everything I've covered. You see here, whichever I'm putting tick mark, everything is covered. PLDs, uh, ASIC and COTS is not there in your syllabus. So PLD part is done. Different types of memory is used in uh, Embedded system design, everything I've told you that is uh, uh, RAM and ROM memories. Under RAM memory, again, we have static RAM, dynamic RAM, and uh, NVRAM, that is non volatile RAM. In case of ROM memories, that is read only memories, we have a programmable read only memory, EEPROM, EEPROM, everything is there. Then explain SRAM, short note on optocoupler, I2C, slave device, explain SPI bus on onboard communication, features of IRDA, Wi Fi, Bluetooth, ZigBee, everything we have cover okay so you could refer these questions and uh, based on that questions try to find the answers by seeing our videos and uh, go through it okay so they have mentioned the recommended questions in the in this video in these uh, notes so that's all guys the notes is completed here as you can see and we have covered all the concepts uh, from module one so uh, this was completely about module one Nothing much, the introduction part of embedded system. Now in the module two, we are going to see with some deep, some, some more deep about embedded system. That is about the characteristics of embedded system, some more wider applications and uh, some important applications of embedded system such as washing machine and uh, many other things. Okay. So that and all we are going to cover it in the uh, next, next module. Okay. We'll see you that in the next module. 
so this module is over guys uh i hope you have uh, seen all the videos and uh, has uh, hope you have uh, enjoyed uh, sorry you have liked the video please like share subscribe to our channel comment down your opinions about how these videos are useful for you guys and uh, that's all guys thank you we'll see you in the next video